What do you say to the girl or guy sitting in this audience that has got a bit of a predisposition to want to be liked by many or most? If you don't get over that, you're doomed. Because what happens is this, you start to create a whole bunch of people that aren't even yourself. You never figure out who you are. You, you never live up to your dreams, your ambition. You live up to what whoever is around you that you like so much that you want to emulate and be like so much. You live their dreams. You lose your power. You, you lose your power. The ultimate power is owning yourself. I had to reinvent a human being. I sat at home so, for so many fucking nights by myself, broken, broken, not just physically, mentally, spiritually. But then I sat back and said to myself, I invented a motherfucker. I actually sat back when I was fat, nasty, out of shape, miserable, and created a human being in my mind that didn't even exist and said, that's what I want to be. I want to be that guy. I want to be a guy that's capable of doing exactly what I'm doing today. And you have to, if you weren't born that guy, that mentally strong guy, he can be made. Woman, man, whatever the, whatever the hell you are. It can be made. But in making that person, you have to turn, be able to turn down book deals. You have, to be, you have to be who the fuck you are every day of your life and never care about anybody who gets in your way that says you're not doing something the proper way. I was always afraid of people not wanting to, like when you get beat as bad as I did, I lied all the time. I wanted to be accepted and loved and all that shit that I created about 50 people. Whatever you like, I like. Just if you would be my friend, just be my friend. And that's where we get lost in life. When I post about suffering, this whole new kinder, gentler, soft ass fucking world, they just fucking, oh God, this is horrible. We talking about, no, suffering, if you know how to do it without making it out to be like, I'm not talking about you have to go through cancer, but I guarantee one thing, man, I bet you a better motherfucker Mentally, if you look at it the right way, everything I went through in my life, every bad fucking thing I went through in my life, the two heart surgeries, all the name calling, being everything I went through. If you learn how to flip that motherfucker on top of his head and say, hang on, hang on, there's so much power in this fucking thing. And if you look at life as it is a trial ground, a testing ground for where you need to belong, where you need to go. Suffering is a fact of life. If you look at suffering the right way, it's a great tool to callous your mind. If you look at it as suffering, woe is me, this is bullshit, God, kicking rocks. If you look at it like, okay, motherfucker, you're testing me now. I get it. Whenever I'm being like depressed, I go through depressed moments, I go, oh, hang on, I'm getting, I'm getting tested. So you have to be aware of all the signals and signs that are, that are being given to you from the world. One of them is if you feel bad, you're being tested. How are you going to perform under that? And that's suffering is a part of life. Very needed. It's the only place. Man, I'll never forget when I was younger and I lived in a seven dollar place and it fucked up. Everything was jacked up. I would, for, I had a pair of jeans and every, I'll never forget this as long as I live. You know, first day of school, people go school shopping, right? Week out, two weeks out, maybe a month out. We didn't have any money to do that. So I had this pair of jeans that the inside of the pocket was green. The inside of the pocket was green. I wore them almost every fucking day. So what I did for the next year of school was I cut that pocket out so the green would show, so look at a new pair of jeans. All I wanted was money. All I wanted was a nice car, was a nice home. The second I got the fucking money to do it, I realized this is bullshit. That's why I don't own a car. I don't own a place. I don't own shit. You will see me wearing the same fucking shit every fucking day. Nothing. What I realized is all I wanted in my life was look at that fucker in that accountability mirror and be proud of. And everything else went away.
while you need money to be successful, you need money to live, you need money, money does buy a form of happiness because without it, you're fucking miserable. But once I realized it, it doesn't mean shit, it doesn't mean shit for me. While it helps you, it also hurts you to come from darkness because why it's easy for me to sit back and say, you know what, poopy pants mentality. I'm going to sit back and let the world take care of me now. And we, that's what I'm talking about. Don't play sick too long. While my childhood was so messed up, I played sick way too long and I almost lost tons of opportunities by playing sick. Because it feels good to play sick. My dad beat the fucking shit out of me, man. I, I couldn't read. I can't read. You know, when I was a junior in high school, I couldn't read. If you live that life, yeah. it feels good for people to, oh man, you know, that's just David, man. He's just not real smart and he had a bad life. And you, you get a get out of jail free card. That's nice. It sucks doing what I had to do to get here today. That was not fucking fun. That darkness is not, there's, there's nothing that dark to drive me to the place I had to go to become successful. On the flip side of that, if you come from a silver spoon family, you have to realize that. You have to realize, fuck, there's people out there like David Goggins who had nothing, fucking nothing. And I've had all this opportunity in front of me, and I'm a loser. I'm not shit. So what does that say about me? The conversations are very similar. You have all this opportunity, and you've gone nowhere with it. I'm at the bottom of the barrel, and it could take me a lot longer just to get where you're at for the, for the starting line, to be fair. There, there's a barrier in your brain. There's a barrier. You got to find out what kind of removes that barrier from your brain. My biggest barrier was my father. And once I removed that barrier, I was free to think. And once I felt good about myself, I was free to put action in. I never felt good about myself. I never felt good about myself. Whenever I would get somewhere, the demon would come back. But people right say we don't cage. have the time. If you don't we have go 24 back, hours like, a day. I'm a runner. Left we sleep hurt. six hours a day, that so that gives you still 18 hours. A lot of times it's your fucking right Until hip. this and room redefines success into waking up in the morning and being up, happy versus money, Go to the origin. we will be in a bad place. Right, you are coming against a powerful force, the enemy, nature, time. There's all kinds of things that, that are going against you. It's a losing battle. And if you don't use force of will, then 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 you're not going to get it done you have to be aggressive and make things happen i'm allergic to average and the problem with a lot of you is you're not allergic to average all right you don't want to give an 80 percent like you're the one that's not all in it's on you you're not 120 because success is allergic to average success and average don't have nothing to do with each other you are allergic to simple. You are allergic to ordinary. You got to show the world that you mean business. You got to show the world that you come to take action. See, greats like you jump over hurdles, run through barriers, but never ever stop grinding to win. Your problem is you think you can have an average mindset and get to the next level. You need to make things happen. I am going to take action. I'm going to overcome obstacles. I'm going to push through roadblocks. I'm not going to take no for an answer. Listen to me. I'm allergic. Are you hearing me? I'm allergic to average. And the problem with a lot of you is you're not allergic to average, all right? You got to do me a huge favor, man. You lying to yourself. On one point, you said you want to be great. You want to do great things. You want to have greatness. You want to be great. Listen to me, but on the other hand, for real, for real, you comfortable with average. And I told you, listen to me, I don't care what side of the, 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 the railroad track you were born on. I don't care if you were fluent. I don't care if you privileged. I don't care if you grew up in poverty with the father, without a father, with a mom, without uh, uh, adopted. I don't care. Listen to me. The reason why I'm telling you that I'm allergic to average is not personal. ET is allergic to it because success is allergic to average. Success and average don't have nothing to do with each other. You are allergic to simple. You are allergic to ordinary. Talk is cheap. 
so you can say that you're allergic to average. But are your actions backing it up? You got to show the world that you mean business. You got to show the world that you come to take action. See, greats like you jump over hurdles, run through barriers, but never ever stop grinding to win. You can't say there's certain dreams and goals, there are things you want to have and things you want to be if you are still average. You got to get to the point where you get allergic to average. You don't think average, you don't perform average. Listen to me, when I tell you the success and average have absolutely nothing to do with each other, this is what I'm telling you. Your boss can't stand average. Your coach can't stand average. Your teacher can't stand average. Your spouse, listen to me, your mama might put up with it. Your daddy might put up with it. But listen to me very closely. Nobody really likes average because average attracts average. You can't help it that you suffer from ambition. You can't help it that you suffer from trying to be great. You can't help it that you suffer from trying to go to the next plateau. You can't help it that every fiber of your being, every fiber of your existence wants to win. You can't help it that you suffer from a severe case of aspiration, purpose, and dream chasing. That's the exact reason why you keep racing because you're trying to catch up to your dreams because they won't do it. That has absolutely nothing to do with you. Some people have a problem for every solution. Some people don't believe that they can achieve at a high level. Some people are okay doing what normal people do, doing what average people do, doing just enough to get by. But that's not you. You have dreams, you have goals, you have aspirations, you have desires. And you are taking action to make all of your dreams a reality. They gotta go because now it's back to the grind, because now it's back to the shine, because now it's back to getting after it, now it's back to going all in for what you said you wanted. I need you to speak it one time, one time, that's it. I need you to say it one time. I need you to get it out in the atmosphere. I need you to say it so you can hold yourself accountable to what you said. Tell a friend so they can hold you accountable. But after you say it once, shut your mouth, go into the lab and get to work. Are you hearing me? Shut your mouth, shut up. You didn't hear me say a million times I was gonna speak for the NFL, but I'm in the NFL. You didn't hear me say a million times I was going to Australia. You heard me say it once, then I went in the lab and I got to work. Let me tell you something very carefully, because I'm tired of people calling me. I'm tired of people emailing me. I'm tired of people texting me and saying, ET is not working, ET. I'm grinding, ET. I'm hustling, ET is not working. Listen to me very carefully. You reap what you sow. Don't get it twisted. You reap what you sow. Now, if you don't see what you think you should see, understand that to grow a bush and to grow a tree, it take a little bit more time, boo. So yeah, you've been studying for three months. And yeah, you've been grinding for one year. And yeah, you've been hustling for two years now and you're not seeing what you, but guess what? I told you before, you've been doing it for two years, but what were you doing the other 30 years? What were you doing the other 21 years? So it's gonna take time, but listen to me very closely. If you would get yourself in the lab, Say it, write it down, look at it, but get in the lab, number one, and start working on it. When you have an extraordinary mindset, you are determined to make the impossible possible. You are determined to make the unbelievable believable. You are determined to do more each and every day than that average person will do in a whole week. You are determined to do more in a week than an average person does in a month. You are determined to do more in a month than an average person does in a whole year. Some of y'all, you lying to yourself. You say you want to be great. You say you want to get to the next level. You say you want to be dominant on that field. You say you want to go to the final four. You say you want to be a national champion. Listen to me, you say you want a promotion. You say you want to start your own business. But listen to me very closely, you talk too much. Shut up, get in the lab, and let's go to work. Go to work and do your work. Listen to me, don't just go to work when you feel like it. Go to work every single day. Work on it every day. So you got the real card. I mean, let me tell you something, when I went to America, I went to college, 
I went and worked out five hours a day and I was working on construction because in those days in bodybuilding there was no money we didn't I didn't have the money for food supplements or anything so I had to go to work so I worked on construction I went to college I worked out in the gym and at night from 8 o'clock at night to 12 midnight I went to acting class four times a week so I did all of that there was not one single minute that I wasted and this is why I'm standing here today if you die today what dreams what ideas what talents what books what music what leadership what voice will die with you a lot of people who are biting their fingers in fear that they might lose their jobs but there are few people who have decided within themselves I'm going to make it some people aren't waiting to be cut some people are moving on their own because they feel within themselves I've got what it takes to make it they're not afraid about tomorrow because of how they see themselves, because of what they feel that they deserve, because of what they feel that they can create for themselves. Because these people have decided, as they look at the future, as they look at themselves, there's a way. Where there's a will, there's a way for me to begin to create a way out of no way. And when you have that kind of consciousness, when you have that kind of spirit, nothing can stop you. Nothing. There's no secret to success. There's a system to success. And no matter what organization you become a part of, the system works if you work it. If you don't work it, it won't work. But it works if you work it. And that's one four-letter word that most people don't like. They are not willing to. To work. As human beings, we need to understand that everything that we do is governed by our view of the future. But not just tomorrow, not just next week, the future that you can create in six months, six years, or 60 years. Because everything we do as human beings is governed by this view of the future that we see. But most people don't see a future beyond today, tomorrow, next week. And most people are just getting on with being average. Most people are just getting on with being like everybody else. This is your wake up call to just get on with doing what you know that you could do. That if you did every single day, all of a sudden you would completely reinvent yourself. You would apply the most powerful law in the universe, the law of compounding. So who is the person you could become? Are you just getting on with ruminating, going over and over things inside your mind and never taking the action to really break through? Are you just getting on with being distracted, letting your impulses get the better of you? Take this as a wake-up call. You see, the word distraction came, comes from the same Latin root word, trahera, which means distraction or traction. And in life, it's really important to wake up to the reality that you're either moving forwards to something you want or you're moving away from something you don't. That if I did it in this moment, everything would change. When you're feeling stuck, when you're feeling confused, when you got everything, inside of you. I want you to tell us what those lowest moments of childhood felt like in one word. Temporary. Absolutely temporary. There was just no way I was gonna let that person beat me again. And there was just no way I was gonna stay comfortable in this negative place. Just a matter of time. Some things are just destiny, you know? Look, everybody goes through a moment in their life where everything you thought up to that second vanishes 
and you realize that there's an opportunity to change the story that you've written in your head for the last two, three decades. And I think it's universal. I think there are very few people who don't get to a point at year 20, 30, 35 that don't start debating, wait a minute, is this what I want? Is this where I'm going? Is this how it's playing out? And you know, to me, that is one of the most important moments in one's life. You know, many people look at it as a moment to start to get upset and say, wait a minute, this is not what I signed up for. And others, regardless of what's happened, use it as an opportunity to write the next chapter. You know, I think anybody who's listening right now, if you want to set yourself up for success, ask yourself how much risk you've taken in the first 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 years of your life. When I started talking about business on Twitter, every single comment in 2009 was, shut your mouth, wine boy, stay in your lane. I'm telling you right now, you want to talk about why so many of you aren't exactly where you want to be? Look deep inside yourself on what your expectations of others are. Ask yourself how much you've been succumbing to peer pressure. Like if you've always wanted to be cool to the popular kids in your high school, you're in trouble. The amount of people in here that have a job they hate and they buy things they don't care about to impress people they don't give a about scares the out of me. Most people spend money on dumb things which then forces them to do things they don't want. Long before I became the wine guy on YouTube and Twitter, I was a businessman. And I think if it's your truth, there's a very big difference between being an entrepreneur and a successful entrepreneur. I can say that I'm a football player. Doesn't mean I'm gonna get paid to do it. And so I think the truth, I I think it's unbelievably uh, exciting for me. It feels warm in my heart that the thing that I've seen consistently analyzing this every second of my breathing day for the last decade has been whatever your truth may be, As long as it is actually your truth, you will always over-index. And people told me to not curse on stage, you know, my agents who look like, stop cursing on stage because we're losing so much money. I'm like, I can't. I have to be me and wherever the chips fall, and I think for everybody, A, it's fun because it's easier, and B, audiences, audiences are smart, to your point. You can smell when that person wants to put their agenda through. Mm. And so I think the truth, which is a very exciting answer to this question, The truth is undefeated. My friends, accountability, giving with no expectation in return, playing the long game, every single person's business or ambition will grow exponentially tomorrow if they spend the next 13 years giving away free content forever. Seems super non-natural. When do you monetize? How do you do this? The person that holds the breath the longest wins. Until this room redefines success into waking up in the morning and being happy versus money, we will be in a bad place. Think about two core things in my opinion. One, you have to, at all costs, not beat your own self up with yourself. At all costs. It's huge. You need to really be your own biggest fan instead of critiquing everything. Number two, moments in time. You've got to wrap your head around how young you actually are. You have to wrap your head around how early in the process this is and how this is just a very small moment in time. 400 trillion to one. I just want everybody to hear this. This is the reason I'm happy 24-7, 365 for the rest of my life. 400 trillion to one. The odds of becoming a human being. You might not like the human being situation you ended up in, but let me tell you this. Your mom might have grabbed another glass of wine and you never would have been. (laughs) I mean, 400 trillion to one. The best thing you can do is try your very best. I've never seen anything. to fall off track. It's one tweak away. It's one adjustment away. It's one modification away. I know it hurts, but... And adaptability. Create opportunity. Anything that comes your way, you got to be prepared to accept the challenge and go through it. Don't lay on your back. If something's on your chest, get it off. As long as you're breathing, as long as that heart is pumping blood, 
You not dead yet. They haven't put rose petals on your box yet. Make sure every breath you take counts for something. Don't you give up on life. Cause once your life is over, you can't come back. You've behaved like this long enough. You've been triggered long enough. Come on, you've had buttons for too many years. And people have been given permission long enough to push your buttons, to trigger you, to punk you, to corner you, to box you in, to put the lids and put the labels all over you. And you have just conformed to this place of misery. It's time to break through. You've Adaptability is not buckling under pressure. Adaptability is not losing your moral compass. Adaptability is raising your voice. And so the harder life hits me, the harder I'm going to fight, the harder I'm going to believe, the harder I'm going to keep pushing, I'm going to keep going, I will persevere, and I'm going to build resilience. And so the harder life hits, the stronger I get. It's the group of employees that's been called to work two more hours. It's the team that's been called to win a championship in the snow or rain or sleet or the weather's changed or now all of a sudden the crowd is no longer cheering your name. Can you adapt one little tweak in the game and there is a future for your family? And, 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 and this is the power of understanding that if I can make a few tweaks, if I, if I can make a few adjustments, if I can see this thing just a hair differently, there are champions that win by hair because they made an adjustment. People all over the globe who have made adjustments, who have adapted to a circumstance, who have adapted, who have modified and tweaked their game and beat on their craft and got the trophy. You gotta start thinking about the future. You've gotta start thinking about sustainability. You gotta start thinking about future generations. It's time to understand that if you want to get something out of your life, you got to be willing to work for it. How much are you really willing to give? Are you prepared to hurt? Are you prepared to struggle? Because if you're not that person, then lay back down. Stay where you are. Don't move forward. Move backwards. But if you are the person that you say you are, we don't have time to wait. Because time doesn't owe you anything. What you gonna do? But rather than going back, learn from what you've done and continue to move forward. That is the ultimate, ultimate goal. Because the further you keep pushing yourself back to what you want to be or what you should have been or what you need to have been doing, it slows you down from the progress that you have waiting for you ahead. So ladies and gentlemen, get to work. Be productive as always. Don't put yourself in a position where you have to go back. Keep moving forward. Adapt and overcome. And watch everything change before your eyes. It's gonna hurt.